Hello everyone and welcome to a special video that from this point forward I'm going to try and make around this time of year. As many of you can tell from already reading the title, this is a video of my predictions for this year's E3 convention. For those of you who may not be aware, there is a convention that takes place once a year called the Electronics Entertainment Expo, or E3 for short. Essentially it's a business week long event where game developers and hardware manufacturers show off and reveal their new products to the masses, giving massive hype behind their products. There are other large gaming and hardware conventions throughout the year such as PAX East, PAX Prime, Tokyo Game Show, and Gamescom, but E3 is by far the largest and most eventful of them all if you're looking for the games themselves. Essentially it's where the three largest gaming companies in the world, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, announce the largest titles they have to offer. Last year was fairly uneventful for all three developers with the exception of Nintendo, who unveiled their new home console after many years of speculation, the Wii U. Due to this massive announcement, not only do Sony and Microsoft have to step up their game, Nintendo also has to hide some major releases to make their conferences worthwhile this year. For those of you who have never attended or watched an E3 convention, you can watch all of the major conferences online for free through websites such as IGN and YouTube. If any of you are interested in watching these conferences, please read the descriptions for the times of these conferences so that you can tune in yourself. My predictions are based off of the patterns of the game developers and companies, what has already been announced or hinted at, reliable news sources, and what seems to be the most likely route for the game developers to take. The first conference I will be focusing on is Microsoft, since they will be the first major company up to the plate starting on Monday, with the exception of conferences where Microsoft unveils new hardware such as their Xbox 360S or the Kinect. Microsoft conferences are unfortunately uneventful, heavily acted, and focused on multi-platform games rather than exclusive first-party content like Sony and Nintendo are known for. If you're looking for gameplay and insight on large multi-platform games such as Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, and a few others, Microsoft is the conference for you, along with Ubisoft and EA's conferences. All of this in mind, here are my predictions for Microsoft. Without a doubt, we will be seeing a lot of game demos. Call of Duty is always in the Microsoft conference, and that will be the place to get your first look at Black Ops 2 if you're interested in Call of Duty. Microsoft will also be showing off some of their own games, such as Halo 4 and Rise, the Kinect-based mature action game developed by Crytek. Assassin's Creed 3 might show, but if it's not shown there, expect to see it in Ubisoft's conferences. Kinect will also be a big center point of their conference. Several games will be shown off for the Kinect for those who are interested. New software and Xbox Live features will be shown off, as usual, with Microsoft. In summary, Microsoft's conference will be on par with the conferences they've had in the, for the past few years, with one potential exception, the next box. If Microsoft plans on revealing their next home console this year, expect to see the majority of their conference focused on the new system. First and third party launch titles will be a must, and hardware features will be what everyone is looking for. If the next box is revealed this year, I predict a few games for launch titles. Banjo-Kazooie 3, or 3E, Halo 4 would be a large contender to be launched on the next box when it releases, and possibly other large exclusive fan franchises such as Forza, Gears of War, or Alan Wake. If Microsoft unveils any new games this year, I predict that they will be a Halo 2 remake due to the fact that they are looking to release one Halo game per year and they already remade Halo 1 and a new Gears of War game. As many of you know, Epic Studios' main design team is no longer working on Gears. However, Bulletstorm developer People Can Fly recently had their development priorities shifted to a more important project. And, and an upcoming Game Informer cover hints at a Gears of War game in the making, due to the fact of a silhouette on the cover that looks oddly familiar to Marcus Phoenix in handcuffs and the Locust in the background. For Gears and Halo fans, this will be great news. But unfortunately, if Microsoft reveals nothing new aside from a few games, it'll be very uneventful for the most part. Next up is Sony. Sony, like Microsoft, has fairly uneventful conferences. Typically, Sony has a good bit to reveal, but they spend too much time with montages and sales pitches to make it interesting like Microsoft and Nintendo can do. Luckily for us, Sony still reveals a decent amount of content to make it worth watching. First off, they're going to be demoing the games they already announced. God of War Ascension, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, Sly Cooper 4, and The Last of Us will be the most prevalent games on show this conference. There's a lot of hype behind them, and that's what the fans want to see. There have been some rumors in the works talking about Sony planning on revealing a PSN Plus revamp. This could be a good thing in the sense that you get better services, but it could also mean that they're planning on making online gameplay premium only, much like Xbox Live, 
which is bad for existing free users of PSN. I predict that Sony will be unveiling some pretty large titles. I predict that if they announce any games, we'll see Infamous 3, Jack 4, Little Big Planet, and finally get a new word on The Last Guardian since it's been nearly two years since we've seen anything on it. Similar to the topic of the next box, it's really a coin toss to see if the PS4 will be unveiled. There are strong rumors suggesting that the PS4 and next box will be here at this E3 convention, and more strong rumors suggesting that they won't be there at all. Regardless of what turns out to be true, I'm fairly sure we'll see them both at E3 2013. If Sony does unveil their next home console, they'll be focusing heavily on showing off the hardware features and announcing several launch titles for the system. Unfortunately, I can't really predict what franchises Sony would use as launch titles for the PS4 since they keep the ones exist in existence fairly active with new entries. If anything, I would predict that the games I already predicted to be announced would be announced for the PS4. Again, those being Infamous 3, Jack 4, The Last Guardian, and possibly another Little Big Planet game. Last and finally not least, we have Nintendo. Nintendo is known for having the most eventful conferences at E3. Unlike Microsoft, most of their content is not heavily scripted, and unlike Sony, they don't announce their biggest titles a month or two before the conference takes place. Nintendo has what I like to call entertainment value. Now that that's out of the way, I predict a lot of reveals at Nintendo's E3 conference. The 3DS is selling very well, and last year they unveiled their new home console, the Wii U. If Nintendo announces nothing, they leave nothing for their investors to be happy with. Fortunately, Nintendo rarely disappoints. Starting with the portable line, I predict that Nintendo will be showing off some of the games already announced. Luigi's Mansion 2, Paper Mario, Animal Crossing, and possibly Monster Hunter 3G and 4 that we saw last year at Tokyo Game Show are the most likely candidates to be shown off. Nintendo will probably be revealing several new first party 3DS games. Last year an original Zelda 3DS game was rumored to be in the works, leading it to be the most valuable 3DS game in the works for them to announce. Along with Zelda, I would possibly expect a Donkey Kong or even a Pokemon game, possibly a Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald remake that many of us have been waiting for a long time. I wouldn't expect much in the hardware line. I don't think we'll see a 3DS revision within one to two more years since the 3DS has just been out for a little over a year. Although we may see a new 3DS bundle. Part of the confusion with the initial 3DS launch was the fact that the DS itself went through so many revisions causing the 3DS to start with lower sales. We may, unfortunately, see a price increase on the 3DS due to, its, due to them selling it at a loss to boost its sales. The most I'd see on a 3DS price raise is $200 from its current $180 price tag. Now to the home console line. The Wii U was announced at last year's E3 convention with high critical acclaim. The console pushes boundaries that many consoles and game, developer, game development companies have never pushed before. Adding a screen to the controller was a brilliant move on Nintendo's part, bringing the benefits of a 3DS to their home console. Unfortunately, Nintendo didn't announce much about their home console, aside from what the controller was capable of. Almost no launch titles were confirmed, no launch price, hardware specs, or launch window was revealed. This is the year that Nintendo will announce all of the answers we've been waiting for. I predict that they will announce the final price of the Wii U and a holiday 2012 release date. I don't think they'll announce the specific release date, but I expect to see the quarter 4 2012 launch window reiteration that we've been hearing for the past year. I think they'll be revealing most of the most of the hardware specs, but they probably won't go into large detail to keep the press conference from dragging on. I also predict that we'll see finished hardware details that we've been looking for, such as the switch from slide pads to analog sticks, and possibly the ability to play DS and 3DS games. Now on to the games. I predict that we will see at least three Wii U launch titles. Nintendo has supposedly been working hard to make sure that the Wii U has a much stronger launch than the Wii and 3DS had. Pikmin 3 is obviously going to be a launch title, or quarter one title, for the Wii U. It's been in development for a long time. Originally a Wii game, shifted to 3DS, and now to Wii U, Pikmin 3 is sure to be there at E3 this year. Next, I predict that we'll see uh, some more on New Super Mario Bros. Me, or Wii U if you prefer calling it that, possibly as a launch title or bundled with the Wii U to bring more sales to the system itself, and also bringing some long-term entertainment, which is something that lacked with Wii Sports. 
Finally, I predict that there will be one surprise launch title. Retro Studios, the developers of Metroid Prime, Donkey Kong Country Returns, and part of Mario Kart 7, has revealed some time ago that they are working on a launch title for the Wii U that everyone has wanted to see. This implies a few things. One, that it's a franchise that hasn't been seen in a while. Metroid, Kirby, Donkey Kong, Kid Icarus, Mario, and Zelda have all seen releases within the past three years, leaving only a few Nintendo franchises left. F-Zero, Mother, or Star Fox. F-Zero, although great, is not as highly requested a game series as something like Mother or Star Fox is, and unfortunately, Mother has kind of fallen off of the face of the earth with the exception of some devout fans dedicated to the series, leaving only one major franchise left, Star Fox. Star Fox hasn't had an amazing entry in the series since Star Fox 64 on the Nintendo 64. And the remake does not count. Star Fox is one of the most valued Nintendo franchises, yet Nintendo has yet to put any effort to make a Star Fox game this generation. Retro Studios is known for taking Nintendo franchises that have kind of died and breathing new life into them in the ways that in a way that fans weren't expecting, but bringing the franchise to a new grace that has not been seen in quite a while. Retro is one of the most talented design teams I've seen in gaming, and Star Fox is the game that I predict that they are working on, without a doubt in my mind. There have also been rumors of a Star Fox and Metroid crossover. Somehow, I think this is false. But if it's anything, I predict that it'll be a Star Fox game with Samus playable in multiplayer due to the company's heritage. These are all first party launch titles, however, and this does include third party. We'll be seeing big names such as Battlefield, Batman, Metro, Last Light, Darksiders 2, etc. However, I also think that we'll be seeing many more third party surprises and games that Nintendo publishes that we won't know about until E3. I predict that Nintendo won't simply stop there. I believe they will also announce upcoming Wii U games that are not launch titles. If the titles I mentioned previously are not launch titles, I expect them to be announced at the very least. If Nintendo announces any new first party games for the Wii U, aside from the ones mentioned previously, we'll see a new 3D Mario game, a teaser for The Legend of Zelda, and possibly a Smash Bros. teaser. I don't expect Smash Bros. to be there since the development just started two months ago. However, there's a strong possibility that Mario and Zelda could appear in the form of teasers. This year's E3 convention is looking to be a great one, with the possibility of Sony and Microsoft revealing their new home consoles, and Nintendo planning on a massive Wii U and 3DS lineup, I'm sure this year won't disappoint. If you would like to hear more of my opinions on gaming and E3, please subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified when I upload another video pertaining to the topic matter. As always, this has been The Blade Gamer, and I'll see you next time.